honestly, like if we were to think about like the meaning of life, <laughs> it's like connection and making like trying to make each other like marginally happier, you know, like, it's, like that's that's a pretty good life. If that's like how we spend it. I don't know. I don't want to get too soapboxy here, but but if I were to guess, that's yeah. the meaning of life. Welcome to season eight of We Got Goals, the podcast by sweatlife.com. We are doing things a little differently this season, featuring topics from our crew of expert writers, responding to moments in pop culture, or talking about whatever the hell we feel like talking about. And by the way, I am Gina Anderson Cohen. I am the founder of A Sweat Life. And joining me today and all season is Kelly Makovich, who leads our community, the lifeblood of A Sweat Life. We're so excited to talk to you about all the things we love on the pages of A Sweat Life. Kelly, what are you excited about this season? Oh, boy. Um, Well, I think what we've talked about a lot internally is we have such incredible writers and so much content on our website. Why aren't we talking about it everywhere? And I learn through listening content. So I, I, I consider myself not much of a reader, although I, I can read. I just don't do it as much as I listen. Um, I can and so, read. <laughs> I just wanted to make that clear. Um, so I thought it would be great if we like talked about the topics that are on our website so we so people could listen to them um so yeah that's what I'm excited about I feel like it's it's a little different um and fun and I love that I I talk well I'm excited to just have these conversations with you uh because the ambassadors at Sweat Life all know you and our our, a lot of our like community partners know you but uh, I do a lot of the talking on, on the podcast I'm excited for our listeners and readers to get to know you a little bit better because you are, you, you make the community go round. Um, well, yeah, I hope it's great. Cause I, uh, have reservations about being, um, on a <laughs> podcast, uh, because I consider myself not also not a talker. So we'll see how it goes, but I'm, I like, you know, chit chatting and talk about, talk about fun topics and talking about what's, hot right now so i think it, it could be fun <laughs> it is so hot right now um <laughs> kelly um kelly and i start our day every day and basically like everyone in the world we talk to we make start the same way but we start every day of our working lives with one big question and you'll hear us ask all of our guests this and sometimes you know like it's easy to answer and sometimes it's hard uh, and that question is what's good. Um, and what we do together as a team is we uh, just say one thing in our lives that is good. It's a great way for us to express gratitude. And it's also like a nice compact way to share a little bit about our personal lives. Not that we like have a great deal of separation between our work and personal lives, but you'll hear us <laughs> ask that question all season. So Kelly, what is good? Um, so I know this is not a new phenomenon, but uh, Trader Joe's is <laughs> <laughs> And the reason yeah. I say that is because I am now two and a half hour drive from Trader Joe's. So it's it's like a big deal now when I get to go to a Trader Joe's and I went to one last night and I, for some reason, picked up so many dips. Um, I don't know. Trader Joe's <laughs> just like has an amazing dip aisle. Um, so I'm very excited about, I mean, Trader Joe's is amazing. So when I get to go, I get really excited and I have all the dips for the holiday parties. So, yeah. Oh, well, I think, well, first of all, the fact that you can say they have a dip aisle, like a dip yeah. aisle is over the top special. Um, yeah. I also appreciate Trader Joe's mostly because my husband <laughs> does all the shopping. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so he comes home with like tzatziki, which they have dairy free tzatziki, by the way. Yeah. Well, they also have all these vegan dips and I got excited because mm-hmm. I have some friends and families, family members in my life that are vegan. And so this will be an easy thing for me to just bring to a party. <laughs> I love it. I just watch. So I, I tried to be like, <laughs> I have to eat gluten-free and like nut-free and seed-free. And I tried to be, Kelly experienced this. We, <laughs> Justin, my husband and I spent like a month in Austin and on our way driving from Austin to Colorado, we drove like through all of these like 
pardon me, listener, but like slaughterhouse fields of like cows just waiting to die. And I was, I got to Kelly's house and I was like, Hey Kelly, great to see you. I'm not eating meat anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and, that's, and that's how it happened. <laughs> and that's how it happened. But I'm eating meat again because <laughs> there was nothing left. <laughs> there was nothing left. <laughs> My tricky colon. Anyway. Out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, mostly there was there was nothing I could eat anymore. Uh, <laughs> you want to hear my good thing? Yeah, what's good with you? <laughs> I would say my good thing is friendship. Um, mm. And I know that's like a, <laughs> a big like hot air balloon of a topic. But what I mean by that is um, I feel like I'm at least like pretty back to normal. Um I'm grateful for that. Just like seeing people and having more friendly interactions. And I also think pre pandemic, I was, I was like personally having trouble with burnout. So I would, I would like expend energy, expend energy, expend energy in like social situations. And then I would end up just like completely burned out. So now I think the pandemic made me like stop and assess like what fuels me, what burns me out. So now I'm like much better at friendshiping in a way that isn't going to make me feel like I need to take a whole day in bed. I mean, I feel like you've been killing it at the friendship game because <laughs> every time I talk to you, you're like meeting up with someone, you have lunch with someone. Yep. It's fun. That's great. I love it. I love friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're great at friendship too. Like you move to a new town in another state and you have like vacation friends already. I know. <laughs> it's really cute. I feel very grateful and lucky because we talk all the time about how adults it's hard to make French friendships as adults, especially moving to a new town. You don't know anyone. Um, and I've been very lucky that it was like found one friend and then it kind of added on and we got to have a cute little community. It's, it's pretty cool. They pick each other up on the way to the gym. <laughs> yeah, what do you call it, up. Kelly? <laughs> 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 I love it so much. The gym bus. Okay, Kelly, let's talk about your journey to working at a swell. If I guess I'll share mine too, but. Uh, how'd you end up working at a sweat life? Like where, where the hell did this come from? <laughs> Great question, Gina. Um, <laughs> so my background is in uh, event planning and logistics. And so uh, I've also had always had such a big passion for fitness and health. And around the time of like the boom of um, boutique fitness studios and group fitness, I kind of found that area of the fitness industry and I just like fell in love. I was like, this is my jam. Um, I love like trying out these new classes. And also at the time, Instagram started to become a big thing. So I found a slut life on Instagram, started following you, a slut life, and uh, started going to some of the events. And in at the end of 2016, you all put out this application to become an ambassador. I applied was super excited when I got accepted. I told my husband I got accepted to this thing. And he's like, what is that? And I'm like, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) None of us knew what it meant. But I was just like excited. I was trying to do whatever I could to just get more into the fitness industry. Because I was like, this is what I'm really excited about. This is what I want to do. And so I kept doing that. Like I became a part time group instructor. Like I just started doing more and more in the fitness. Um, area and the time too, I was like contracting, kind of trying to fi- figure out like my next career move, and then somehow you, you approached me. Actually, I don't even know I've ever asked asked you I about remember. this, but I you, remember <laughs> you approached me, and I was like so shocked because it it's also something I had always wanted to talk to you about. We would go out for lunches and talk about like work and life or whatever, and I always wanted to be like. I would love to work for a sweat life, but I was always like terrified to tell you that. So I just kept it to myself. And so when you approached me and you're like, there's an opportunity, would you want to interview for it? And I was like, uh, fuck yeah, <laughs> I would. <laughs> I'm really excited about that. And the interview went well. And then I came on at the end of 2019. So I was like super excited about Yay! really, <laughs> really like doing, you know, a spotlight life is doing so many events and I wanted to take that to the next level and like reach out for more community and, and then uh, the pandemic hit and then everything changed and we didn't, you know, we figured it out, but yeah. So now we're here today and I feel like uh, we're getting back to normal and we're doing more things and it's really exciting. And 
and I love a sweat life. It's changed my life. And I'm so lucky to be here with you. And maybe, I mean, I know the listeners has probably heard, heard your story, but I think it'd be great to like hear it again too. Like the how and why and what like a sweat life came to be because of you. Yeah, man, I can do it. I can do it. <laughs> well, first of all, I remember exactly that so we were getting these lunches at my like then favorite um, spot, which rest in peace, drop shot, drop shot mm. was in the same like restaurant group that now owns architectural artifacts, which we just hosted like pickleball at. These are both Chicago venues. If you're listening from somewhere else, don't worry about it. They're cool anyway. Um, <laughs> so we were getting these lunches and you would, t- you were doing this cool business where you were helping like conferences and meetings have like health and wellness amenities in their business. Mm-hmm. But you kept kind of like hinting, you were hinting, you were dropping hints that maybe like, oh, maybe like if something better came along. <laughs> and and I, I took note. And then when mm-hmm. Maggie, who um, was in the role or like, I don't think any, anyone's ever in like the same role because everyone always brings their own stuff. But like when Maggie uh, was doing a similar job before you and it was, she was ready to move on. I, I came to you first um, as we were interviewing people to come in and Maggie interviewed you too. And we all like knew you because you were an ambassador. So it was, mm-hmm. it was very easy, very easy process for us. We're like, we love Kelly. <laughs> Kelly. Hired. What a meet uh, cute story. What a meet cute. <laughs> well, we did meet cute. Well, we got, like we met cute at a fitness. Okay. So how I ended up working at a sweat life uh is well first I had a different job (laughs) I was um I would say this all actually started for me in college if I'm being honest so in college I studied journalism um first I studied nursing for like a semester by the way oh I didn't know that yeah because I I went to school I'm like I was the first one in my family to go to a four-year four-year university so like none of us knew really like my parents did the absolute best possible And we were sort of like playing it by ear. Like, you know, we got me into college and then it was like, now what? (laughs) Like, what do you major in? Like, what are you passionate about? What'll make you money? Like, what's secure? And I was like helping people and, and like, there'll always be nurses. Like we always need nurses. And I loved like math and science, but really like in, I should have been like, I should be an engineer because I love math and science, Mm. but instead it was like nursing. Um, not that there's anything wrong with being a nurse, but like I had never, ever, ever had like a passion for nursing. It just felt like a secure thing. So for one semester, I studied nursing, which meant that I got all of my science credits out of the way, which is so funny to say now because like I love science and I talk about science all the time. Anyway, so then I studied journalism and the one constant through college was like I was so busy And the way that I, between like, I had a job and I wrote for the newspaper and for a little bit edited at the newspaper and other like activities and uh, side, like my drinking problem. And then (laughs) (laughs) really actually college. (laughs) And then, so the one constant was that I was like exercising and it made me feel like sane and grounded um, and happy. So like cut to after college, I... Um, like worked on the Obama campaign, which is also important for this story because um, what that taught me, because I worked in the field, was like how to organize a community Um, because that was like my main job. I was teaching people how to talk to people they disagree with or just like talk to people in general and spread ideas and like move forward together, row a boat in the same direction. (laughs) So I went back to Chicago and I was working in PR and I was like, this is obviously my dream job. This is the dream job. I'm doing social media for big brands, but I was so miserable. I didn't like like the culture of big agency. I didn't like, I I, like am entrepreneurial in spirit. And like, there were so many people who were like, no, I'd have, I'd have like a big idea and people would be like, we don't have ideas here. <laughs> it's kind of like, it was kind of what I, I mean, no one ever actually said that to me, but it was just what I felt, you know, like I was also young and like um, too big for my britches. And it was just like a bad environment for me to be that way. So I'm miserable. And I'm like, what makes me happy? What in this whole world will make me happy or at least bring me back to happiness again? 
And so what I decided to do um, was to set out and try different workouts. This is at this point, like 10 years ago. So this was in 2012. The very first article on sweatlife.com was in 2012. I knew nothing about fitness. Um, mm-hmm. I look back on those articles and cringe at the way I like describe exercises, but it resonated with readers because they also were like, uh, most people were beginners with me too. Anyway, so I, I committed to trying workouts at boutique fitness studios and writing about the ones that I loved. Um, and pretty quickly people started like reading it and asking for things, which is what I've come to like define community as people who like what you're doing and ask you to like do more stuff too, um, and tell you what they want from you. So we started hosting events so that people could try workouts together. And the people who were coming to those events, i.e. Kelly started asking for Kelly and friends started asking for like more air quotes, more. And we were like, what does more mean? Okay. We, so that application Kelly talked about, like the program she was accepted in, we didn't know what it would be either. We put an application online and, um, we're like, you tell us what you want. You're all asking for more. Like, tell us, what would it take for you to live a better life? Um, and we took those answers and we built a program. And then from there, community has really been at the center of our, it's been like our nucleus. It's been like, or mm, what's the powerhouse of the cell? <laughs> mitochondria. I'm not, oh God, I'm like, I'm <laughs> not the science mitochondria. one on this. On this show. It's been our mitochondria. It's the powerhouse of our cell. And so <laughs> I'm going to be like the heart. Different sure, it's organs. our heart. It's Take our, a different heart. It's organ. our beating heart. <laughs> and so anyway, so that's how I came uh, to found and run a sweat life. And it's grown really organically over the years. We, But we've had to like be very like uh, smart and strategic and also like have zero quit in us. Like or let lots of it. I, we all hate this word now, but lots of ability to pivot over the pandemic that I talked about as well for like 15 minutes. That's how mm-hmm. I ended up working at a sweat life. And throughout all of that, like I taught fitness classes and like quit my full-time job and then eventually quit teaching fitness classes so I could do all this full-time. Phew. I love that. I, there was some, a few new um, nuggets of story that I hadn't heard Ooh, before. So that was great. Which part? Well, like the nurse part. I guess oh, it was yeah. the most, that was the, probably, <laughs> I feel like I've heard everything else, but yeah, I liked how you went into it. <laughs> Every once in a while that comes up. We're like all, so like I studied, that I one had in. like, yeah, I did early childhood, or like I took an early childhood development class, like mm-hmm. my first semester of college. I think about that class all the time because, like, my friend, I don't have kids, my friends are having kids, and I'll mm-hmm. be like, actually, your child is looking in the mirror and for the first time understanding that their image is them. <laughs> this is, wow, this is you remember? I don't even remember what I learned in my semester, first semester year of college. That's impressive. <laughs> Science is incredible. Like <laughs> human development is astonishing. <laughs> and then I wrote about stuff. Uh, anyway, well, let's talk about let's talk about the podcast this season, Kelly. What are you excited about for this season of the podcast? Like in general, I know you mentioned like talking to writers. Are there any topics you like definitely want to cover? Sky's the limit. Well, like I, so I love like listicles. <laughs> so anytime I see a <laughs> listicle on, on a, a Sweat Life or really any website, yeah. I love the like best of. Like mm. I just think it's, well, it's probably because it's easier for me to read too. Mm-hmm. I'm like quick hitter. Um, yeah. So I love so like any. On the internet. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I think like we do a great job talking about friendship yeah. and then also just like any new trends. I think it's just fun. And that's why I enjoy like, TikTok and like any kind of social media trend is just like trends that are going on. I just think it's so interesting. So I, I love to like dig into that kind of stuff. What about you? Yeah. Um, well, what I, I love writing, uh, like in-depth profile pieces and I like reading mm-hmm. that stuff too, <clears throat> but sometimes they're like hard, long reads are harder to read, you know, like just like you're saying. And sometimes, um, like I, I feel like, you want to get those nuggets from a long read story in an audio format. So I'm excited to take like the pe- the people who maybe like we don't have time to do a full profile with on a sweat life or like they're doing something that's really interesting and give them like a little more airtime um, to talk it out or a writer who just has like a really unique point of view. I'm so excited to get to get those point of views on on the air. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> All right, tell me. <laughs> For those of you who are listening, you couldn't tell that I just did like a little dance with my shoulders, but this was the oh, sound something. effect. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> like a car starting. No, Kelly's just shimmering, shimmying. All right. What are you loving around the Sweat Life community these days? Let's talk about it. Um, yeah. So my favorite part of my job, I think, is is wait, what is your job? Talk about your job. <laughs> So my title is like director of communities and, but I like, we're such a senior director of communities. We're we're such a small team. So we both work on so much. Um, I would say I'm like very operational, which is Mm -hmm. my background to make sense and what I'm strong, like my strengths are. So I like, I do create a lot of programming and then like execute that programming, thinking about our community all the time and community meaning our ambassador community, which is like a membership type, um, um, it's a membership that, that they, that's part of a sweat life. And we create specific programming for ambassadors. And it's just, a, it's a really cool and unique program. And I, it's interesting too, because I always considered myself not a super creative person, but I feel like this, this job is like you were creative all the time. Like, it's like, we're, constantly thinking of new ideas and we just throw it out there and see see what sticks which is really fun because we can we're really quick if we're like okay that failed miserably whatever it is like we're really quick to like turn it around which is really fun when you do have a small team how nimble you can be to like create new stuff but i would say i'm i'm a community builder like i i bring people together to try new things and make new friends and i think that's what i would say i do right yeah. yeah. And you do it in so many yeah. fun ways too. Like you match people up in these pro, you create the programs for them. You're like constantly out there building relationships in their um, studios of the month, which are local and national. If you want to be our studio of the month, hit us up. I'll connect you to Kelly. Um, there's so much that goes into this job and it's really like at the core of it. I, I like, I think if the ambassadors or the mitochondria or the beating heart, mm-hmm. you're like, making sure the heart's working, making sure like the heart is, is happy and healthy and you're giving it cardiovascular exercise. I'm just really going to like kill that metaphor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that is my favorite part is when I hear from an ambassador that something we did or created made a, a difference in their life, whether it's like they got connected to a, a new job through our like Slack channel or if they made a new friend at a studio that they went to, or um, if they like tried a new workout that they're now obsessed with and, and they tell us these things. And I'm like, that is so cool that we made someone happy, a little bit happier. Um, that's like my favorite part. Yeah. And that's all we get. I mean, that's all we really can do. I mean, honestly, like if we were to think about like the meaning of life, <laughs> It's like connection and making, like trying to make each other like marginally happier, you know, like like that's, that's a pretty good life. If that's like how we spend it. I don't know. (laughs) I don't want to get too soapboxy here, but, but if I were to guess, that's the meaning of life. What about you? Is that what you're loving around this (laughs) Tell me about your, tell the people about your role and like how, how you feel about it. Oh boy. Well, I spend my days doing a lot of different stuff. I, I, like, I think that's, that's also what's fun about doing. It. We always joke, like, um, you'll hear me say it later this season, but like, we can do whatever we want at a sweat life. That, but that's, <clears throat> excuse my cough, but that's literally the truth. Like we sometimes, I mean, we, tr- we work so hard to be strategic, to have a plan and to stick to the plan. But it's fun because sometimes like we get to deviate within that plan or like have little moments where we literally are like, okay, yes, the objective is this, but like, what's a fun and creative way we can do it. So we get to, we do get to be so creative every single day. I get sick of things really fast and I have not gotten sick of this. (laughs) So, (laughs) so I get to make, make new friends. I get to meet new partners. I work with like, and talk to really cool brands, um, really cool partners who, really just want to like support our community. And we get to ask big questions like, 
how does this relationship benefit the partner? How does it benefit ambassadors and readers? How does it benefit us as a team? Um, and when we find like the when when we do it. So a big part of my job is asking that question and, you know, like, uh, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> making friends, sweating, paying bills, et cetera. <laughs> it's like the non-glamorous side, paying bills. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah. But you want to hear what I'm loving? It's fresh because it was last night. So, um, probably my favorite things, um, uh, within a sweat life and the sweat life community are the thing. Well, no, I like the things we organize and I also love seeing organic things happen on their own, like the book club. Um, so there's this semi self organized with tiny little guardrails, AKA it's like on my <laughs> zoom, but still, um, we have a self-organized book club, um, that's happening. It's monthly, the, like a community, a new community member, or like we voted last night on books, but a new com community member like picks the next book we'll read, pitches the book to the group, and then we decide on it. And so we realized last night that we've only chosen books by female authors. Um, they've all been, uh, I believe they've all been female authors of color, um, oh no, I'm sorry. Two out of three have been female authors of color. Um, and they've all had like strong female leads, which has been really awesome because we get to come together and like discuss these like awesome, really cool themes of like family and loss and identity. <laughs> anyway, the book club is super fun because at like, we've talked a lot about fitness and like finding friends through fitness. But I think like a lot of times as an adult, the way you find your friends, whether it's work or a club or like a religious institution or a grocery store, like, or a coffee shop, whatever, that's just like the container, <laughs> you know, like we met at the coffee shop. It doesn't mean like your whole, the only thing you do with the friends at the coffee shop is coffee. Like you start doing, that's when you really know it's a vibrant community is when like other things pop up when it's like, these are the people I go to when I lose my job. These are the people I go to when I, when I want to read a new book. So that's like the book club first and foremost is delightful, but also like what it means for the health of the community um, is like heartwarming. Ugh, it's and so I love cute. Book. I, I will join one, one of these times when I finish a book on time. <laughs> I mean, you can also come if you're full of spoilers. No, I really want to finish the book. Um, I think the other okay, thing okay. I wanted to talk about is that something new this year that we're going to continue to do is our goal for it program, which I think it's just, it, it's so yeah. fun for me to work on because it's like has some structure, or it needs some structure, but it's um, something new we created. And I feel like it kind of came out of your original idea of a goal university, which kind of turned into this, this other thing. Um, yeah, but you know, the, earlier this year, we took 16 people through a swimming program. And then we took people through a running program this year. And now we have 200 people signed up for a strength program that's happening in 2023. And it's all like, fully supported, they get lots of like perks out of it. And just think it's, I think it's just a really cool program. And that's just like, been an added addition to the ambassador program of everything else we're already doing. But I'm excited. Yeah, yeah I love goal for it. I love goal for it. And honestly, goal university, like that sometimes you have an idea and it, like on paper, it sounds amazing. And then you start like executing and you're like, uh, this isn't as nimble as I'd like it to be. Or like, this isn't as in line with uh, with our values as I want it to be. And so like the further we got down that path, the more we were like, how do we do this in a way that feels more like it al just align better and, and allows us to like change yeah. it up and try new things. Um, goal, you know, goal university will never tell you what that was. Yeah. Like maybe we want to do it. Like exactly. <laughs> maybe we want to do it. It's a secret. <laughs> Kelly, do you yeah. want to do show and tell? <laughs> Now it's time for show and tell. Um, let's share a tip, a resource, or an article to help listeners. And Kelly, because this is the start of the season, your show and tell can be literally anything um, oh, okay. about anything. Well, I pulled, I pulled an article from afootlife.com. Um, and one of, oh, uh, all of our writers are incredible. I think I really like Sarah, her last name now is Beerman, I think. It used to be Sarah Kelly. She's just yeah, a great yeah, yeah. writer and she, uh, like her background, she talks a lot about mental health and stuff. 
she has a piece about how to find movement that brings you joy. And I feel like that just like I've connected with that so much in the past year. So I moved to Colorado from Chicago two years ago. And it's like such a different lifestyle out here. Like I used to be like in fitness studios all the time. Like that was my activity. And now it's much more like get outdoors, try so many different activities. And so um, I'm really like learned to um, find ways to move my body for joy. I don't know, and later podcasts, I might say joyment, but it's fine. Um, Cause I'm, <laughs> yeah, joy. Um, Cause you'll hear me say really weird words all the time. Um, but yeah, so I, I like that article was great. And I, I just think it's something that you can always go back to. And she gives like really good tips on how to find those activities that just make you happy. I love that. It's funny because it's like, I feel like our views as like a team and an organization on exercise have changed so much. Um, I also think it's like culturally or a lot of folks views on exercise have changed too. Cause it used to be so mm-hmm. like aesthetic based, so like weight goals based. And I'm just not into that anymore. Um, I don't think I ever was really into that. I think, I think, I mean, like, I think we all were like, not to like get into like, <laughs> hashtag the patriarchy but like hashtag the patriarchy we, we all were like kids who were told like yeah. to shrink and be quiet yeah yeah get little and don't talk and now like I just want to be loud and like my mm-hmm. the size I'm meant to be you know, like, I don't care about that I don't get on a scale and I want to do yeah. exercise that feels good except solid core like I do solid core <laughs> but it always hurts and I'm dying <laughs> Uh, yes, please. Okay, you want my show and tell? Okay, my show and tell. Oh no! I lost it. <laughs> I, had, I had it in my brain and I lost it. Oh, well, please. Where did it go? Oh yeah. Okay. 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 My show and tell. I remember. So at the time of airing this podcast, we are actually in the midst of uh, a like short week of workouts in Chicago. Um, where folks can um, try workouts. We're doing this solely in the West Loop and y'all can try workouts for $5 or less um, at a bunch of different studios. Mm-hmm. They may all be sold out by the time of this airing. <laughs> but but it's, it's just, it's one of the things we love doing. Like we love introducing people to each other, people to new workouts. So that's one of those moments where it's it's just like a really fun thing to get out and try, but we're not the only ones doing fun things like this. So I would encourage you, uh, whoever you are, listener, to find a group, a meetup group or um, a community or even like your own like November project or um, our friends at Move the World, also known as Strengthen the City. They have workouts across the country. Um, that are popping up here and there. So just find someone who can easily be the conduit to friendship or like our friends in Dallas, fitness ambassadors, um, find your, find your tribe. So our, our little like introduction to our tribe, $5 workouts. They're so easy peasy. It's brought to you by Carmen, not like easy in a physical way, but it's brought to you by Garmin and you have a chance at every single workout to win a Garmin. That's device, pretty awesome. Which is pretty dope. And so we're on the same like theme because that the theme of those workouts are move for joy, joy in January. No. Move for joy. <laughs> We're just on this joy kick. And joy is not just for the holidays. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Joy is for all year round. Da, 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 da. What's something we're loving this week, Kelly? I know we talked, we did our show and tell, but what's something you're loving uh, this week? Yes. I talk Anything about this um, company often and they should sponsor us, but it's newly and U U L Y. I am obsessed with them. This is a newly, um, sweatshirt sweater. If you listening to us, it's a sky sky high. It's kind of like a skiing, like after skiing sweater. Um, they, I just, I just love them. Especially where I live now is like a very casual attire all the time so anytime I go on vacation or if I go to Chicago and I'm like I need some cute stuff I rent it and so I don't so I'm not buying a bunch of stuff and I just I think they're a great company and I get so excited when I get a package in the mail 
Oh, I do love it. I do love a newly delivery. Um, not watching. You actually, what's crazy is your sweater matches my uh my thing I'm loving. Um all right. My thing I'm loving, the book no. <laughs> matches Kelly. Um, so the vibrant years is our next our next book club pick. So we will have not finished this book at the time of airing. We have not met on this. So I mean, like you can grab it, read it quick. Um, the Vibrant Years, it's a novel by Sonali Dev. Um, it is actually um a Mindy Kaling joint, um, her new like Amazon print division. Um something, something, something. I'm not getting it perfectly right, but she's involved in this. Um, so you should pick that book up. I guess if you have a Kindle subscription or Kindle Unlimited, it's free right now, um, or you can buy it, um, which is super dope. That's, that's our book club book. By the way, this has been another episode of We Got Goals, which is an AsweatLife.com production. Thank you, Kelly, for joining me Thanks now. and for forever. having me. <laughs> and thank <laughs> <laughs> yeah, girl. Thanks to Ryan Deffitt for editing, to Ryan Barayuga for video production, and thanks to you, our listeners, for you know all your love and support and for subscribing, rating, and reviewing wherever you get your podcast.